Well, I wanted to start today's episode with a slow clap, but I decided not to because I figured that would be an absolute editing nightmare. <laughs> but I wanted to do that because I want to give myself a hand. Last episode, I told you all that I would get Jared Rumsey back on the show, and I have delivered. He is here. Rumsey, welcome back. It's good to be back. I'm a little tired. We're going to make it happen. We each That's got right. our, our brewskis. Oh, hell yeah, yeah brother. <laughs> our happy juice. Happy juice. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so. it really feels good to be back. Yeah, good. COVID was not fun. No, but oh, it wasn't yeah. that bad actually. Not that I bad. just didn't have the brain fog was bad. Yeah, 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 for sure. But definitely good to have you back on because it's been like a couple weeks. Yeah, since we had you on. Episode, yeah, this is the so. longest I've gone without recording. Yeah, I know when you got on, you like couldn't even figure out how to set up your microphone. <laughs> <laughs> what do I do? It was a fun, it was fun time. In one of these inputs somewhere, I don't know. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Well, I don't have a good transition, so I'm just going to go right into it. Today, we're going to be talking about our worst financial mistakes and what we've learned from them. So, Talon, as our financial guru, as we call you, why don't you get us going here? Oh, man. Uh, financial Hold on. Mis- Before we start, uh-uh. I wonder I wonder if the financial guru is going to be the one who's made the biggest mistakes. Ooh, perhaps. Or- who is not uh, we'll see we'll see uh, i mean curious he is a financial guru he's got to have had some failures along the way to learn all the things he's learned so talon go ahead uh yeah so i'm curious i don't i i doubt that like my fails would be like absolutely terrible but uh my biggest failures is just not caring about finances uh i don't know if i've talked about it in the past but for the longest time i could not care less about finances so basically like when i when I first kind of like became an adult and I started earning like a normal income and everything, uh, I was like that type of person. I'm just like, man, I'm going to live in the moment. Uh, I don't need to know about all these things about investing and learn about how the tax system works or anything like that. Even though I had, I had the opportunity of some great mentors that's, uh, that was there and they've come and gone and everything. So I missed a lot of opportunities there. Like I've known, I've had some people that's really smart with the tax system uh, really smart at starting businesses and stuff like that but like at the time i just like i don't care about these things um and like even little things like uh like retirement accounts and everything this is probably like my f- actual major failure um like that i can actually point to so a couple of years ago the air force and the military as a whole changed their retirement program um so basically what it was before was that there there pretty much wasn't anything that you would get unless you stay 20 years in the military and then you would receive a pension of about 50% of like what your base pay was for the rest of your life. Um, so like that means that if you only served like eight years, 10 years, even 19 years, if you didn't reach that 20 year mark, you wouldn't technically receive any actual retirement. Um, so they changed that just a couple of years ago. And now anyone that joins the military is in this new retirement program. Um, but for some of us that was still pretty young in the military, they gave us the option. Do you want the old system or do you want the new system? Uh, at the time, I'm just like, I don't care about this. I don't see myself like needing this retirement account. Uh, maybe I'll do 20 years. And I just didn't do the math and everything. So basically, the new retirement program is that if you put 5% of your base pay into your retirement account, the Air Force literally matches that. Um, and yeah, 5% doesn't sound like a lot. But if you really break that down, uh, the Air Force is immediately doubling your money so you put five percent in they're matching that with five percent you just double your money right there let alone however much that improves like in the market and everything like that um so that's a major mistake that i didn't like that i made because at the time how i saw is it's like because i wasn't even investing in a retirement account at that time because i'm just like i want this money now retirement something that i'll think about when i'm like 40 or 50 or something like that which is way yeah, too late yeah, to think about late. retirement because yeah at that point compound interest is not in your favor whatsoever so do it earlier um yes you want to enjoy your time now um you want to enjoy your money and spend on something that you enjoy in the moment and everything but realistically a five percent of your pay how big of a deal really is that especially if it doubles your money yeah it's not a lot None. so 
take this from me anyone that's in the military and uh or anyone that has a retirement account when like with your employer and they do any form of employer matching because a lot of a lot of companies do this with the 401k programs and everything same thing like if you invest like five percent they'll match that sometimes it could be higher sometimes it could be lower but again if you at least get to that match point they're doubling your money immediately so take advantage of that um at the very least like even if you want to retire early or something like that, it's it's a huge benefit that people don't take advantage of. Um, even in the military now, I know a lot of people that aren't taking full advantage of that employer match. Um, yeah, that's one of my biggest mistakes is not taking advantage of a proper retirement account. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny you should yeah. mention that. Uh, at my last job, we had the option as a – well, once you were a full-time employee – you had the option to contribute to a 401k account. And it was one of those things where I was just like, I'll, I'll eventually do it, you know, whatever. And then five years goes by. I worked there for five years. It's five years I could have been putting money into that account, and I never actually set it up. And it was mm-hmm. kind of like you said. It was the same situation where it was just kind of like, I don't really care about that right now. Like, I'd rather see the money in my account, in my paycheck every week. And, uh, yeah, it's like – I, it's one of the things I've learned a lot from you in particular, Talon, and from doing this podcast is just like the value of money. And I think I thought, or at least I thought I had a good grasp of like kind of financial stuff. But after kind of hearing some of the stuff I've learned here, I really didn't as much as I thought I did. And that was one of the things like, you know, I didn't really take advantage of that retirement account. I never took advantage of investing in credit cards so those are all really good points that you made i think it's especially at younger ages people like things that people don't think of and they think oh that's stuff for when you're older but really it Mm -hmm. should be for when you're younger because the younger you are that's the longer you get to take advantage of you know um things like that and programs like that yeah exactly like that's it's one of those crazy things but like if you look at something like compound interest if you really grind in like say your 20s and you just like let that build like if you grind and invest in your 20s uh you can technically build enough for your retirement then and just not have to contribute for the rest of your life and then with compound interest it'll build enough for you to retire on versus if you wait till you're 30 you've already lost 10 years um that's a huge difference um and i will preface this uh because i am i like i just i just complained that i didn't take advantage of a retirement account but at the same time today because i made the i made the judgment for my own life that i want want the ability to retire early um because most retirement accounts you can only start withdrawing when you become 59 and a half without taking certain tax penalties and everything so i'm not even investing in any retirement accounts right now because in my own like for my own personal uh situation i'd rather invest in uh, just a normal uh investment account that way if i want like when i'm 30 or something like that i can immediately start selling stocks i could live off that i don't have to wait till i'm 59 and a half but again if you have employer matching it's doubling your money again five percent if even if i had that opportunity um even though i want to retire early i would still take advantage of it because five percent five percent isn't a big issue um and i would double my money so like when i'm 60 i'd have significantly plenty of money that i could live off of yeah, and I like I like how you're uh, emphasizing five percent because it's an amount that shouldn't make a difference at all, mm-hmm. and uh, this kind of ties into my financial mistake uh, of living above my means. Like five percent shouldn't affect you as long as you're living below your means. But if you're living above your means and you're living paycheck to paycheck, that five percent is going to seem like fifty percent when mm-hmm. it comes down to it. Uh, so that's my mistake. Um, I'll give you an example of a big purchase. Uh, my first car. (laughs) So I was brand new in the military. I just got here to Nebraska. Um, and I had never lived on my own or anything. Um, I wasn't really taught a whole lot about finances. I mean, I was in school, but I didn't really pay attention too much. Because uh, I was like, I'm not going to be dealing with this stuff until like 10 years from now because I was really naive. So what did I do? I bought a brand new car. Um, thankfully, it wasn't it wasn't like a super expensive brand new car, but it was still like 17 grand. And I got like a crazy high interest rate on it. 
Um, so then I ended up paying more like, you know, 21 grand on it before being real. Uh, yeah. And I was just like spending more money than I could, uh, than I was bringing in. And I had that car payment and then I had rent. Um, yeah. And I, I was living paycheck to paycheck on salary, which if you're on salary and you're living paycheck to paycheck, like Ooh, it's yeah. really easy it's really easy for you to like just crunch numbers. Like you can mm-hmm. just play a numbers game. And if you're on a salary, you can, you can get rid of that problem pretty quickly. Um, realistically, what I should have done is like sold my car and then got like a used car. Um, and then stop spending as much on like fast food and drinks and all that stuff. That's a big mistake. I think people make and they don't realize it cause it's so easy to do. Um, you know, like for one, you talk about like the interest rate, um, you know, you think whatever, you know, uh, it, it's, it's future me problem, whatever. <laughs> and then, you know, future me gets there and you're like, man, I could have saved so much money if I tried to negotiate a better deal or looked at, looked for a better rate some mm-hmm. through somewhere else. Um, and you end man, up spending, future me sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no future. You says past you sucks. We're not thinking of it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's like, that's, it's just the kind of things that you don't think of. And you really just got to be so diligent about your finances and that kind of stuff in, in that regard. It's something that you really need to like actually think about. And that's like one of the most, like, is like you mentioned buying a car. Like, I feel like that's one of the most, I don't know if like predatory is the correct word, but I feel like it's a predatory practice in the automotive industry. And just like, I guess loans in general, um, because you go to a dealer and you talk about whatever car you want and everything. And what's the price that they give you? They're like, oh, it's going to be $300 a month. They don't talk to you yeah. about the overall price. They don't talk about how much interest you're going to be paying over like over the years and everything like that. They're like, it's $300. And then that, because then yeah. people, mo- majority, yeah. And then most majority of people, they'd be like, oh, yeah, like I can afford like $300, $400, whatever it is per month and everything like that. Um, but then they don't think about like that overall number. It's just like, man with all the interest and the principal of the car and everything, that's like $30,000. Yeah. That's a down payment for a house right there, for yeah. example, like, yeah. like little car. things like that. Yeah, exactly. Because like, they don't like a $30,000 or whatever. Like that's a lot of money that you can do a whole lot with. Like when and then you, you got to get the new rims, you got to yeah. get the windows tinted. Yeah. And then that doesn't <laughs> add that. The sad thing is like at that point, this is for you um, because it doesn't add any value to the car. Sometimes it could actually decrease the value because it's those are those are very personal things and your own personal taste. So if you go and try and resell that car, you're probably not going to get your money back whatsoever on majority of those upgrades. Um, yeah, cars cars are a crazy thing, and uh, I did this similar thing where I bought a new car and everything. Luckily, it worked out um, kind of by accident. But if I ev- like ever again, if I buy another car, it's going to be used because realistically, it's just like I can buy a two year old car and I just got a fifty percent discount on it just because it's. A couple yeah. of years old and it has all the things that i want because there's not a big difference every single year cars barely change you want to hear a uh, a really good kind of comparison as to um how crazy like the car market is so my dad works over at mercedes-benz uh average kind of like base car is like seventy thousand dollars <laughs> all right ready so here's the comparison because this is something from my work the other day we were looking to buy a new engine, not new, like used. We were going to buy it used from Union Pacific, and SD40-2 sold for $70,000. <laughs> wow. So a train yeah. locomotive as much as a car. As so when you think, like, think about how crazy that is, like the difference in what you're getting. Yeah. That's you know? insane. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah, I mean, yeah, your company could literally make hundreds of thousands of dollars with that train that they just, or like with the engine they just bought, versus someone that buys a Mercedes. Majority of that's just in the brand mm-hmm. itself. Exactly. But yeah. Yeah. So wow. it's definitely something to be be aware of, and like it's cra- it is crazy when you think about it for like what a car is, and I, I understand like people want the creature comforts, and you know like my car has the remote start, which you know I didn't put that in. That came. That came with it. Whoever owned it before me put it in. So that was just kind of a bonus. I didn't buy the car because of that. But, you know, people want those creature comforts. They want the heated seats. They want, you know, to be able to start it from their phone, like pick up my phone and start my car and set my 
temperature and everything like that stuff's all well and good but at the end of the day like if you're on a budget or on a fixed income do you need that yeah you need to put that into perspective you have to be like how much are these heated seats how is that really going to make me that much happier versus having that money in the bank or maybe in like that could be your investments or whatever it could be like that could be your emergency fund like well, because like some yeah. little, little things like that it's like oh i want that sunroof oh that's like a three thousand dollar upgrade man that, you could do was, a lot of money with three thousand dollars and that was exactly yeah. the point that i wanted to make too because you think about it like okay you spent the extra money on that sunroof or on those heated seats or remote start or whatever uh and now you don't have that extra money what happens when the car breaks down uh, yeah right exactly. so now you have, here's some now you have this okay, car and you can't pay to fix it here's some perspective I paid like fourteen hundred dollars less to have my car in gray or in tan <laughs> yeah. than in red. Yeah, it's and if it was red, just cosmetic. But yep. and also, if it was red, it would have cost you more on your insurance. Yeah, people don't think wow. about little things like that. Yeah, yep. it's yeah. crazy. <laughs> it is insane. <laughs> um, However, so this financial mistake it did teach me a lot. Um, I think failure is the best teacher. I think we can probably all agree on that. Um, yeah, I mean, if you come across a financial advisor, chances are is like, you know, at one point in their life, they were probably broke and they made really bad money decisions. If you find like a, a fitness coach, chances are they were probably pretty unhealthy or unhappy with how they were physically at one point in their life. And for myself, yeah, I was broke while i was getting paid salary and getting paid more than i've ever made which is ridiculous i remember one night walking into the grocery store and getting 30 dollars of groceries and i go to the register and my card was declined <clears throat> come to find out i went negative on my bank account and i didn't have any in savings Oof. i didn't have any investments i didn't have any credit cards so i literally i was literally broke um, but I had my $17,000 car, uh, in the parking lot when I couldn't even buy gas for it. Mm -hmm. So I remember getting in my car and I had to tell them that I couldn't buy the groceries. Um, and I sat in my car and I was just like, man, I never want to feel this way again. That's a low blow. I mean, yep. that's what it, yeah. that's what it took for me to like realize that I was doing things wrong and that I needed to change it yeah. does yeah it, it just takes like that realization like i mean it's if you actually look at some of the numbers i can't give like actual proof but like if you just google it so like there's actually pretty good numbers of like people that's been homeless and everything if they get out of that situation uh they succeed a lot in life because i mean perspective is a huge thing they know what it feels like to be broke so they understand money very well um versus like someone that makes i mean it's it's pretty common no matter what like pay area you're in like whatever your income is but like people that can make three hundred thousand dollars a year uh they could be stressed out about money because it's just like i'm living paycheck to paycheck uh i don't know what i don't know what's wrong like i i need to make more money uh or like they could even be in credit card debt and everything it's just because they go down like that that cycle it's just like li like lifestyle yeah. inflation and everything they make they make a little bit more money they throw a party here or there then maybe they buy that new car and then it's just like it's exactly the same cycle exactly it's just like why am i living paycheck to paycheck when i make more than i did last year it's just like oh look around yeah. you buying, <laughs> like, buying all yeah. the name brand stuff instead of the buying the ridge wallet instead of the off-brand ridge wallet that's exactly <laughs> well, the same <laughs> an attack can't, on Chris right can't imagine who we're talking about right now <laughs> yeah he's not even here yeah, to but defend himself I'm talon you made a good point is uh in lifestyle inflation like if you get a raise that if you get a raise, you shouldn't be spending more money. Yeah, like your monthly exactly. spending should not go up if you get a raise. Like maybe nope. your monthly saving should. That would be a good idea. Your monthly <laughs> investing, that would be a great idea. Yeah, that's the best way to reward yourself. Um, it actually reminds me, and I feel kind of like bad to it like to this day. So when I, when I got promoted to staff sergeant, so in the Air Force, like when you become staff sergeant, that's the first rank that you actually have to kind of like work towards because you actually have to like test for it and only so many people, so many people get it anything before that you just have to be in for so long and you just get it um and so when i when i put on staff sergeant like first try and everything 
uh, my wife Gabby, she actually got me a present. She talked to my mom about it and everything. She got me a watch, like a four hundred dollar watch. Um, and I opened it and was like, Whew. I'm just like, like I, I didn't know how to react. Like I should have just said thank you and everything like that. I'm just like, can we return it? Because <laughs> no. I did, I did, and we actually did return it. And like again, I feel bad about it because it's just like she really did put a lot of like time yeah, and effort not into the best getting response, me. Yeah. But exactly but I then like coming from at that point in my life i'm just like I, I i like i just put on this new rank um it's like you make like 300 dollars more each month and i'm just like i don't just because i make more each month i don't feel like i deserve it like a reward and honestly like i didn't really study or anything like that like some people for that rank so it's like i didn't i didn't put in a lot of work for it so i'm, I'm not getting rewarded for the work that i put into it and i'm just like I'd rather put something like that and towards something else because everything that I think about, I'm just like, I could use this for something else. Um, like something like that. I'm just like, Oh, that could be like a vet appointment for my dog, like in an emergency. And it is like, I just took bear to the vet and we had, a, we, we spent $300 on like antibiotics and stuff like that. Um, and just like, boom, like right there. It's just like little things like that. You save that, that can save you an emergency down the road. So that's just, yeah, it, it <laughs> I feel bad about this to the, to this day, but like, I'd probably still do it again. Like it's that's a, one of the things. <laughs> it's a practical way of thinking though, you know? Yeah, exactly. And I think again, very objectively. Yeah. At that point, And like, not to look at it from like a cynical perspective, but at the same time, it's like, you know, you guys are married. So it's kind of like, it's almost like spending your money at the same time where it's like, I appreciate it. And that's great. But like, we could have used our money on something more important or something that could have made us money yeah exactly yeah. and that's one of the crazy things especially with christmas coming up um like i like she asked me it's like what do you want for christmas i'm just like i don't know because again it's yeah we're married so like her, if she buys me a gift technically that's like our money so i'm just like if i wanted it chances are i probably would have already bought it yeah. or something like that because it, yeah. it makes no difference it's not like asking my mom for a gift or something like that because technically that's like her money so like stuff like that it's just like yeah, so for Christmas, I don't even ask for anything because it's just like, I would just bought it for myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel that. I mean, I'd rather have... So here's an idea. Uh, if you don't... Like, I don't really want gifts too much. Um, if you make something, like, sure, that's thoughtful and mm -hmm. it doesn't cost a whole lot, I'll take it. Uh, I do not... I don't want a new, like, chain necklace. I don't want a new watch. Like, I went through a little stint where I bought a couple watches on sale, but I mean, it was still more than I should have spent. And now I'm just like, why do I need four <laughs> different watches that look different? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, come on. I got, I got my Garmin. It does everything I want it to do and I can train with it and it looks pretty good with like whatever I wear. Yeah. True that. I um, think that's, I think that's good advice. Um, especially for someone like me or anyone that's like cares about like their finances and, your finances too because i don't want my friends to spend money on stuff like that for me so making something like uh gabby i think she finally learned um so like for father's day for example she actually made me here i'll actually get up and show you guys she made me a gift right here he got so i thought he was about to say it was the sweater he's wearing oh oh oh, cool. oh nice yeah so she she made me that it's hard to see from a distance but basically all it says is like best dog dad on it she made like little flowers oh. and put like bears like paw prints on it as like the flower petals so it's just oh like something gosh. like that it it probably costed her like 10 bucks in canvas and paint so i'm not going to complain but about the money awesome. and i'm just like you put a lot of time and thought into this so and yeah. that's a better that like to me and we actually talked about this um last episode when we were talking about uh oh, christmas hol stress the yeah. holiday stressors for holidays and like making gifts and stuff um it's like that's so much better than any watch Mm -hmm. you know because it's like I, again i don't want to go too far on that tangent we talked about it last week if you didn't see it go watch it um but yeah i mean it's it's such a different thing when you like get a handmade gift it's it's much more appreciated yeah, thoughtful I think. yeah mm -hmm. usually doesn't cost as much and i mean experiences as well like would you rather have this uh this material item like a watch yeah. or would you rather have an experience like oh, a thousand percent uh, rather have the experience a night on the town or like the I stories you can do, tell i think are so much better than any material thing yeah I, 
I've changed my perspective on that over the years. I definitely, I'd rather have memories than I would material things. Yeah. Uh, when I was like n- a new adult and everything, I'd rather have things because like in my mind, I'm like, I could spend a thousand dollars on a vacation, but once that vacation's done, all I have is my memories. I was like, or I can spend a thousand dollars on like a new computer and I could use that every single day. So, but I mean, life's, o- life's only so short. So I'd rather have those great memories that you can carry throughout your entire life. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and guys, if you're going for experiences, bonus points, if you can get her family involved in the experience. There you go. <laughs> Dang, giving some relationship advice too. I thought this was a finances episode and then <laughs> well, bam, Jared give Ramsey advice, but with their with the relationship advice coming in clutch. Yeah. You want to rent out a movie theater? Hey, that, hey, I, I mean uh, seats and uh, food and everything combined probably cost as much as that watch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then you tell her whole family and be like, hey, you know, work out dates with everyone and be like, hey, can we all meet at the movie theater I rented out at this time on this date and surprise her? Did you do this? Uh, I did. <laughs> he did. <laughs> I did. It was really cool. That it is was pretty cool. Awesome. I want to awesome. do it again. That's pretty sweet. I hope she doesn't listen to this. I want to do it again. <laughs> oh. I think it would be awesome. It was so much fun. Just like I'm going to cut this as a in clip there, and post on Instagram. Just walking in the movie theater and you're like, oh, like it's not a movie that's playing out in theaters right now. It's like I got to choose whatever movie was playing. So I was like, her favorite superhero is Spider-Man. So I got them to play Spider-Man in the theater. Uh, and then... So she thought that was cool. And then walking in, she didn't even realize her whole family and friends were sitting in the audience. <laughs> oh, uh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty it awesome. Was the theater to ourselves. It was really cool. Nice. All right. Um, Before... I'm not trying to brag. I just, yeah. <laughs> it was such a fun experience for me too. Yeah. Like to plan it and bring it all together. So maybe an experience instead of a gift could work. Yeah. So before we get into my biggest financial mistake... I would like to get into something that is not a financial mistake because it is, in fact, free for 30 days if you click the link below because you can get Audible free for 30 days with our link below, and you can read. Well, you don't have to read. You can listen. You can listen to all kinds of books on any subject, but you can also listen to books on other people's failures with money and how they overcame them and succeeded. So you should do that. Click the link, free, not a financial mistake, because it's free, for 30 days. Audible, do it. Nice. I just used my monthly credit for a book called Think and Grow Rich. Uh, I haven't read it or listened to it yet, but that's my next one. That's the best part. You don't have to read it. I know, right? <laughs> just, Jared, just put it on Jared when you're at the gym or whatever. disagrees, but... It- don't worry about it, Jared. <laughs> Jared, you haven't been here in weeks. You, you don't get to disagree right now. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Your opinion doesn't matter. So my biggest mistake. So I would. I want to go with the broad stroke first, and then I want to focus on a specific instance. So I would say the broad one was something we've kind of covered already, is just generally kind of being ignorant to certain things. Like, I thought I was very good with my money, and I I think I was good with my money, but not as good as I thought. And, again, there was a lot of things that I wasn't doing that I should have been doing, like not investing in that retirement account, not taking advantage of the perks and benefits of credit cards, um, not taking advantage of, you know, investing in stocks and in the stock market. Those are all things I could have been doing for, like, such a long time that I only started doing recently, and... I mean, I'm still young enough where it's going to have an impact on me, but I like, you know, say I did it five years, six years, eight years sooner, it could have had so much more of an impact. So definitely with that kind of stuff, earlier is better, without a doubt. So my biggest financial mistake specifically would be going to college. And I don't, I don't want to discourage anyone from going to college. That's not the point of what I'm trying to say. I'm what, not convinced. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, my point being is be more educated about, you know, what comes with going to college. You know, it's easy. It's easy to say, "Oh, I'll get this degree, and then I'll be able to pay off my school." That's. It's not that simple. 
Everyone says that. It's mm-hmm. it's really truly not that simple. And especially if you end up in a situation like me where I went to school for engineering for two years and then I changed majors and went to school for exercise science for two years. And guess what? I work for a railroad. <laughs> like, you know, I'm not doing any of the things that I thought I would have done. But in hindsight, and again, hindsight's always twenty twenty. but know yourself. Like, I think I've talked about it before as we talked about, like, peer pressures and things like that. I felt pressured to go to college because it was, you know, whatever, it's what you're supposed to do. If you want to succeed, you go to college. Um, so I took that as I pretty much have to go to college. And that's what I did. And I don't think that was the right move for me personally. Now, again, I'm not saying that's not the right move for everybody. And a lot of people go to college and have very successful lives and success, uh, uh, successful careers. Um, I don't think that was the route I should have gone. I think, you know, even if it didn't end up, you know, it just happened. It so happened to fall. The railroad thing fell into my lap. And, you know, that was like a childhood dream of mine. So it's really cool that I'm able to do that. But at the same time, I think if I really thought about it, there's other routes I could have and should have went other than college. And why do I call it a financial mistake? When you think about it, you pay for four or five years of college and college is hundreds of thousands of dollars. So now I have a college debt that I have to pay back. And to make matters worse, I don't even have a degree to show. I mean, I have a a bachelor's in exercise or uh, associates in exercise science. But um, aside from that, I don't have anything to show for. I really, it's not, it didn't become worth the money I spent on it. So that is why to me, it is my biggest financial mistake. And again, it is not the case for everybody. But know yourself, like when when you're committing to go to a college, ask yourself time, like ask yourself more than once, ask a lot and do your research and figure out, is this right for me? Is this what I want to do? Does this feel right? Like the right thing to do? Because honestly, if it doesn't, it's probably not. And if it's not, you know, you're, you're not going to succeed. Or if you do succeed, you're just going to end up doing something you're not happy with. And I mean, I know, again, that kind of strays away from the point of finances, but you know, why are you, why are you paying for something that you don't want? You know? So like, that's why I would, I would go with that as my biggest financial mistake. Yeah. Okay. I'm convinced. (laughs) I'm convinced too. And like, again, it's like one of those similar to like car loans, student loans are a little bit too like predatory in nature. I feel because it's just like, oh man yeah well you can you can get the student loan you don't have to pay anything right now you can pay it in like you can start paying in like five years or whatever it is and just like people are like they don't even think about it they don't even think that they're literally spending like a hundred thousand dollars later and it's just like ah oh, this is gonna be in the future i can make plenty of money um and they well most of the time probably they don't even think that they probably just don't even think about the money in general um and then they in like whenever their student loans you have to start paying it they're like oh dang i didn't even know i spent this much money so uh it's like one of those things society puts a lot of pressure on you but like anything else like you said just know yourself be educated if you aren't sure 100 percent uh take a year off do something else find yourself uh, because it's a it's a big commitment that people don't realize i would say like the the biggest uh kind of failure part of that for me and um I know it's kind of almost like a counterintuitive way a lot of people think, especially like when you're in high school and you think it's almost, you know, like a slap in the face. But uh, go to community for two years first if you're not sure. Seriously. Because you'll spend a hell of a lot less money. If you if you find out it's not going to work out for you, you can pay that off pretty easily. And, like, that's that's a big mistake. Like, I'm paying, you know, hundreds of dollars a month toward NJIT where I went, I have nothing to show from NJIT. So the way I view that personally is I'm literally like flushing hundreds of dollars a month down the toilet Mm -hmm. because I got nothing from that. So, you know, that's why I think it's important. Take that time. Like, unless you are like absolutely a thousand percent sure, take that time, go to community first, save yourself that kind of money, especially in the beginning. Cause like the first couple of years, or like general education anyway, like you're not doing your core classes, get that out of the way to community college. And then if you decide, Hey, you know what? This isn't right for me. I want to go, you know, I'd rather go work for, uh, 
a, a park ranger, whatever. doesn't matter. Like anything that you might not necessarily need to go to school for. Mm-hmm. Um, then like you, you don't, you won't have like wasted that money. Cause like so these big schools, especially a school like NGIT is, you know, you're, you're talking about like 30, $40,000 a year or more. So that's a big chunk of change, especially to not get anything out of it. Yeah. I mean, research goes a long way. Like you said, I mean, there's plenty of careers out there that you don't actually need a degree for. Um, and even if like someone's like, they really want to go down a certain career path and everything, do research for that career. Um, because there might be like, you might not even like a degree might not actually matter that much. Uh, I know plenty of people, they go to like school for computer science, but realistically, they want to, they, they don't want to be programmers or anything. They just want to be like an IT personnel. They just want to be like a network administrator. Well, guess what? You can also become a network administrator by taking like two months of study material and getting a certification and you can get that job. No problem because a degree doesn't matter too much in a career field like that because your employer wants to know a certain criteria of skills that you have and every single school could technically be teaching different skills. So there's plenty of careers out there that like in industries that they have other ways um, that's actually more important to get into that career field anyways over school. So do research on like what you actually want to do because the path might actually be a little bit more uh, not as simple as you might expect it to be. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, heck like talk to people. Yeah. Talk Mm -hmm. to people who have done it. I mean, uh, LinkedIn is a great example of this. So like set up your profile nice and then set your job title as whatever you're thinking about doing. And then set your location to wherever you want to work, like your ideal location for doing that job. And set up your profile in a way to where it looks like you're doing the job and then reach out to people. Like you'll get a lot of connections, like maybe even uh, some recruiters will reach out to you. Granted, you know that you're not doing that job, but it's a really easy way to connect with someone. And even if maybe it's like a recruiter, uh, they'll probably because they're recruiters, they'll probably give you information and like maybe give you some contacts and yeah. then reach out and talk to people who have done it. Like that's, it's a, it's a great thing to do. Yeah. It takes a little bit of work, but I think it's probably like minimal Yeah, um, for the amount of reward you get from it. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. And not for nothing, but the point that Talon made too, uh, there's so many careers. I think people choose like, Again, I think people go to college because there's such a pressure to go to college. I feel like they almost lay out your options as basically like you go to college or you join the military. Like that's all you I have. I did one of them. Yeah. <laughs> we Well, I did one of them. You guys did one of them. Um, but there's so many other options out there. And then like what Talon said, make sure that you need to go to school for what you're doing. Because there's certain, there's some degrees out there that it's like, do, do I really need to go to school? For, I mean, obviously, like, yes, if you want to be a doctor, sure, you got to go to school. You want to be a lawyer? Yeah, you got to go to school. But honestly, like, you want to write a vlog or, well, I guess record a vlog or write a blog? Like, you don't need to go to school for that. You can just do that. I mean, we basically do it now. <laughs> so, yeah. like, you know, we're far from professionals, but, I mean, you know, we didn't go yeah, to we'd... school for this. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't go to school for video production or anything like that. I mean, YouTube is a great free resource. Um, and out of anything, practice makes perfect. So just start doing the thing that you want to be doing. And you're going to spend a lot more, lot, lot less time and a lot more, or a lot less money and a lot more time doing it and getting the practice that you actually need. Absolutely. So, yeah, just do what you want. Like, just spend time practicing what you actually want to do. Yeah. Cool. So. I would say overall biggest message uh, that would come out of today is don't be ignorant with your money. Don't be ignorant to the accounts that you can invest in at a young age. Don't be ignorant to where your money's going and what you're putting it into. Don't be ignorant to, you know, not, I don't want to say scams, but things that are close on a level of, you know, high interest rates and predatory marketing and, don't be ignorant to like what you want to do. You have to keep all of these things in mind as you're pushing through your financial um, struggles and and everybody goes through them to one extent or another, but you know it's it's learning from those mistakes and being able to mitigate them. 
and I think we laid out some good ways for you guys to do that. So just make sure you're really paying attention as you're moving forward, as you buy that new car, if you decide you want to go to school. Um, when you're deciding whether or not to invest your money in stocks or into a retirement account, take all these things in, into consideration as you move forward. So hope you guys learned something today. And since it's been a while, let's see if Jared can still close it out. Uh-oh. This has been Lessons Learned. Thank you for <laughs> tuning in. If you haven't already or if you're not watching us on YouTube right now, we have video on YouTube. So check us out on YouTube at Lessons Learned Media. Uh, give us a subscribe and you can hit the bell notification to get notifications every time we drop a video, which is every Monday and Wednesday and maybe sometimes like a Friday or Saturday. Um, yeah. And check us out on Spotify and you can find us all on Instagram linked in the bio. All yeah, right. Thank still you for tuning in. Than me. And until next time. <laughs> see, see ya. ya. See ya.